In the name of Jesus, the Christ, who said last week in our Ash Wednesday service, And when you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces that their fasting may be seen by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, that your fasting may not be seen by others, but by your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Fasting has been a Lenten custom since the very beginning of Lent. In our text, the Lord himself approves of fasting as a spiritual purpose, but only for a spiritual purpose. True fasting is not done to impress God or to impress others. It is not done to feel our ego get good by starving our bodies. It does not replace our daily acts of love and compassion. But true fasting is a blessing for our spiritual life as we seek to reflect, repent, and be renewed. In the reading from Matthew's Gospel account, our Lord reflects on the words of the prophet Isaiah, which Pastor Blonsky just read. Centuries before, Isaiah spoke of God's words of judgment concerning his people and their less than spiritual fasting that was going on in his day. The prophet describes the fasting that only serves oneself and does nothing for another person. The annual Mardi Gras celebration in New Orleans serves as a reminder of years past. For Mardi Gras means, Mardi is the French word for Tuesday, for Tuesday. Gras is the French word for fat. Fat Tuesday. Originally, it was the last celebration before the fasting that began on Ash Wednesday. Of course, most people today just use Mardi Gras as one more opportunity to carouse and indulge in the passions and appetites, and they completely forget the most important part, the Lenten season and the call to Lenten discipline. One of the proper goals for fasting is the development of self-control. Fasting is not despising the body. Rather, it is respecting the, our bodies as good gifts from God. Our Lord is our maker, and he intends us to enjoy our human bodies the way he had planned. Moreover, fasting is not meant to somehow atone for our sins, as in other religions. Followers of these other religions do not know of the great once and for all atonement made by Jesus Christ on the cross. We know we don't need to punish ourselves. Christ was punished for us. His death is the one sacrifice for sins, for all the sins of the whole world. No further atonement is necessary. Fasting is not intended to impress others. Rather, in our text, Jesus urges us to put oil on our heads and to wash our face so that no one will even know that we are fasting. Fasting also is not done to impress God. Well, after all, nothing we do impresses God. But he calls us to serve others in love. Listen to this portion of the reading from Isaiah. Is not this the kind of fasting I have chosen? to loose the chains of injustice and untie the cords of the yoke, to set the oppressed free and break every yoke? Is it not to share your food with the hungry and to provide for the poor, the wanderer with shelter? When you see the naked to clothe him and not turn away from your own flesh and blood? Luther says fasting and bodily preparation are indeed fine and outward training. An important goal of a Lenten fast is to learn self-control. In fasting, we learn that we can control our body and its appetites and its desires. And what a freeing and empowering experience that can be. God wants us to lead a victorious life. Jesus lived, died, and rose again to be the Lord of life. 
His victory over Satan, death, and hell is complete. His grace, he passes that, in his grace, he passes that victory unto you and me. He wants us to know the power of the Holy Spirit. And in holy baptism, he made us his children and gave us that spirit. We have his resurrection power. He wants us to be empowered for all of life. He wants us to commit our energies with joy in his service. So how is it in your life? Do you know that energy, that direction, that power? Are there bad habits that you need to bring under control? Are there good habits that you need to develop? Use these 40 days of Lent. You can work out your own kind of fast to meet your own needs and temperament. Some people, for example, take a break from the 40-day fast on Sundays. The fact that the 40 days of Lent don't include Sundays because that is a recollection of the Easter triumph of Jesus. You may want to use the Lenten days to develop good habits like eating six servings of fruit or vegetables daily, like drinking eight glasses of water each day, or you might even try tithing for 40 days. Whatever it is, God wants you to grow stronger in his service. He wants you to be able to withstand all the temptations of the devil while living in the strength of his indwelling. He wants you to be the self-confident individual he knows you can be, to know the freedom and the power of the sons and daughters of God. That's the whole point of the Lenten fast. And most important, every time you think about or feel your fast, you are reminded of what a special time of year Lent is. You remember the suffering of your Lord and what he went through for, for you. You are reminded that these days are for you to reflect, to repent, and to be renewed. This time is a gift for you. These are special days for you. Use them. Try something special. Try a fast. Amen. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in the love of Christ until the day you see him face to face in heaven.